Hello, darling. Yes, sirree, it's little old me, that gal with the chassis that's lean and sassy, your thriller video hostess, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Welcome to another edition of Good Old Thriller Video. Uh, let me see what you picked up this time around. Oh, very good choice. Children of the Full Moon. <laughs> Certainly one of my favorites. <laughs> Gee, I hope you ain't one of them astrology nuts and you picked this movie up by accident <laughs> on account of you thought it might have something to do with astrology. I mean, I know how they like to refer to people born under the sign of cancer as moon children. <laughs> Probably because it sounds a lot better than using that C word. But the moon children in this movie have nothing to do with astrology, believe me. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I don't go in much for astrology or, or for that matter, anything occult or dealing with superstition. <laughs> I mean, I think it is downright unlucky to be superstitious. <laughs> uh, but I gotta tell you, just the other night I went out with a Capricorn, even though the newspaper said it wouldn't work out. Well, by golly, we were totally incompatible. <laughs> he had no income, so I wasn't patable. <laughs> oh, but enough, enough. I'm starting to drift. Uh, let me tell you about the movie, Children of the Full Moon. Okay, a couple on holiday, which is what the British like to call a vacation. A couple on holiday learn to appreciate that old axiom, little children should be seen and not heard. Only these brats shouldn't even be seen. <laughs> but lest I go and ruin things by giving away too much of the plot, what do you say? Why not just kick on back if you're old enough and cork yourself a bottle of something cheap and red? Pinot Noir. Uh, well, I was thinking like something more like uh, Thunderbird. <laughs> anyway, enjoy. I'll be back a little later on and don't forget, you're watching Children of the Full Moon, exclusively from Thriller Video. Enjoy your week off, you've earned it. Thanks, Harry. And thanks for the cottage. Think nothing of it. This has been a very successful trip. You're a good lawyer. So are you. See you. Taxi! Mm. Mm, good to have you back. You make a wonderful chef. Certainly. Where to, sir? Go back to the flat for a quick change of clothes. Straight down to the West Country in Harry's Cottage. Mm. Should be there by supper time. You know, we'll never make it to the cottage by supper time. We should have left earlier. Well, doesn't seem quite so urgent now, does it? You're making me blush. You have nothing to be modest about, Mrs. Martin. When you get this partnership, Tom, will you be able to be with me more? Take my foot off the gas pedal, but we're still accelerating.
You're right. Come on, let's get out. believe in God. Huh. Oh. Well, here we are in the middle of nowhere. I have to thumb a lift. Well, how many cars have you seen in the past hour? Phone. Phone for help. A phone? Where phone? You know, it's really peaceful here. I think part of me kind of expected to be here. Wind up here. Come on. You could always sleep under the stars, like the raggle taggle gypsy. Look, there's a gate. It doesn't look very promising. It's worth a look. Come on. It's just a path through the woods. I think we should stick to the road. Well, now, what have we here? Cold. Hmm. Hasn't it gone quiet? Listen. I can hear children. Children? Listen. Yes. Come on. I can't hear any children now. Maybe we imagined it. Do you think they got a phone? I don't even know if anyone lives here. This must be the back of the house. Hmm? Well, the proper way in must be round the other side. There's probably a main road a few yards away. Well, and hopefully a garage. Good evening. Our car's broken down, and I wondered if we could... Use the telephone! Oh, of course, of course. Come in, my dears. Come in. My goodness, what a nuisance for you. Is there a road on the other side of the house? A road, dear? Yes, well, I mean, I'm sure we must have come a long way round. Bless you, dear. There's no other road round these parts. Come along, follow me. There's not a garage nearby. The nearest town is Apple Grove, and that's 23 miles away. Still, they probably have an emergency service. Well, there's the phone, and you're welcome to use it. You do look chilled, dear. Why don't you come with me into the parlor? I'll make you a nice cup of tea or cocoa. Perhaps you prefer a glass of red wine. My name's Sarah. My husband's name's Tom, Tom Martin. Well, I hope he's lucky with that phone. Sit down by the fire, dear. Dogs won't hurt you. Have a nice glass of wine. Mm, thank you. Mmm, it's delicious. We grow it ourselves. Uh, make it here at the manor. From your own vines? Pinot Noir. Mr. Ardoy has the touch. It's difficult to grow in Britain, but Mr. Ardoy can grow anything. Green fingers. Oh, no, dear. Mr. Ardoy doesn't have green fingers. But what about car hire? Could you hire me a self-drive car? Tomorrow. No, I'm afraid that's too late. OK. Thanks. Goodbye. Carrots, peas. Oh, and lovely fruit, my dear. The most beautiful red apples you've ever seen. We have our own clear spring, too. 
You must taste the water. So you're completely self-supporting? Oh, completely. Yes, yes, quite completely. And vegetarian? No, no, the children do like their little bit of meat. <laughs> oh, that's them, the little horrors. <laughs> they must have heard you arrive. How many? Hmm? How many do you have? About eight. Eight little lovelies. Eight's a very large family for these days. Well, they're not all mine. Oh. Well, some of them are fostered and some are little stepchildren. Mr. Ardo has been married before. Oh, well, you know what it's like around these parts. <laughs> you look famished. I'm going to make you some soup. Soup and an omelette. I do hope we didn't wake them up. Oh, they never go to bed at normal hours. Not our little ones. Yes, OK, I understand. Yes, thanks. Bye. Hello. And where have you come from? They're very shy, not used to people. I haven't had much luck, I'm afraid. You wouldn't, dear. This is really the back of beyond. <laughs> Hello. Come on in, I won't eat you. He's not having much luck, poor thing. So I've offered you could stay the night. Oh. Oh, that's really too much trouble. Oh, always plenty of room, dear. That turret room's always prepared, because sometimes Mr. Ardoy likes to bring a friend home. You know what they're like. <laughs> your husband's gone to get your things from the car. Well, if you're sure you don't mind. A real pleasure and a privilege. <laughs> ah, Eloise, I know you're there. Come along in. And you others, cheeky little pups. Hello. This is Eloise and Andres, Sophie and Irania. Children, this is Mrs. Martin. How do you do? our brother Tibor. Would you like to meet him? Yes, please. I, I'd love to. Well, I'll see to the supper. <laughs> Have you had your supper, Eloise? Yes, it was soup. Mutton broth? Of course.
The children are very shy, but they like you, dear. They're extraordinarily pretty. Thank you. Is Tom back? He's only just gone. Oh, well, then I'll give him a hand with the luggage. Oh, I'm sure he'll be all right. Oh, well, so am I, but I'd like to help him anyway. Fine. Why don't you take the dogs? They're very obedient. Well, if you don't mind, I think I'd like to go alone. They know the woods. I'll stick to the path. or not human, don't you think? It was covered in grey, spiky fur. Its hind legs. But its eyes. If I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't have believed it. What in God's name was it? A stag. No. No, not a stag. Deer abound in these woods, Mr. Martin, and wild sheep that have strayed over the years. But I think it was a stag. Give you a nasty turn in the twilight, too. It bit me, or tried to, snarling and snorting. I'll never forget that sound. And its eyes, yellow eyes. Well, it's their season. They get very protective over their territory. A drink, Mr. Martin. You look as though you could do with one. Mutton. Mutton broth. How do you feel? All right. Bit of a fool, really. Where's your mum, Sophie? Sophie? That's my mum in a photograph. Oh. She's pretty. She was pretty. Have you finished? Yes, thank you.
My goodness, that looks good. It was a stag, wasn't it? Oh, no! I'm getting clumsy again. A wolf, really, Mr. Martin. <laughs> we both heard it. A dog, perhaps. Dogs? A bound in the forest? Well, no, not really. They're frightened of my beasts. But I'm sure that's what you heard. It's a terrible sound dogs have. I it think I like... know a wolf when I hear it. I think anyone would. That sound, it's primeval. Well, I think you'll be quite safe and comfortable in here. The bathroom is adjoining. Fresh towels. Lovely soft pillows. A nice big bed. It was our marriage bed, Mr. Ardoy and me. But I don't really see the need for it now, not at my age. Well, it really is very kind of you. Yes, and it was a lovely supper. Beautiful kids. Well, good night. Oh, there was just one other thing. Silly, really, but I wonder if you'd mind staying here in this room until the morning. Any special reason? The children, really. They tend to roam about a bit in the night, and, well, I wouldn't want you to give them a scare. <laughs> I'm sure you understand. Sleep well. Give them a scare. <laughs> oh, Tom, what have we landed ourselves in? Well, maybe it's some sort of loony bin. Good food. But that was a wolf. Oh, come on. It probably was a dog. You heard it. Yes. Well, we've had a long day and... that car thing upset us and... well, you can hystericalize yourself into anything. Let's just have a bath. I brought these night things for you. How did you get these? Tibor and the other children went down to the car to fetch them. Surely you don't let them go out into the woods alone. Bless you, dear. There's nothing in them woods that my children need be afraid of. Well, thank you. Look, I know it's none of our business, but... Do they ever sleep? Certainly they sleep. <laughs> Why, sometimes it's the devil himself couldn't wake them up. But tonight's different. It's a special night. Special? Why? We are of Hungarian extraction, us Ardois, and... We celebrate festivals that are different from the English ones. Tonight's a special night in the region that we come from. Sort of like what? Christmas Eve? Yes, Mr. Martin. Something like that. Well, good night to you. That was a funny thing the old bag said before. Stay in your room, in case we scare the kids. I mean, they're not frightened to roam about the forest all night. Unless... Unless it's the children who might scare us. It seems a bit out of place here. I wonder who slept here last. What do you mean? I'm not sure. But just suppose the creature in the woods was not a stag. Suppose the animal we both heard howling out there was not a dog. And consider what sort of Hungarian ritual causes little children to be afraid of a cheerful fireside hearth Tom. and causes them to grow progressively clumsier as daylight fades. And those two dogs, 
To protect whom? From what? Oh, let's just change the subject, Tom. And suppose it's a full moon. See what's cooking. I'll only be about ten minutes. No, Tom. Tom, please stay with me. No, don't go. I've got a horrible feeling. On, please don't close the window. On, stay with me. I think we're both being a bit silly about this. I'll only be a moment. You know, we were both very lucky. I'm confused. I can remember the car, but I can't remember the crash. There was a house. We hit a house? No. No, there, there was this house in the woods and a woman. I think you must still be concussed. I must have dreamt it. How extraordinary. Dreamt what? It's crazy, but there was this family of werewolves. <laughs> oh, Tom. <laughs> Only it seems so real. It must be something the doctor gave you. Do you know it's a miracle we're alive? Then, after a day's observation, we were discharged. Rented a car and Sarah drove us on down to the cottage. So you got there in the end? Oh, yes. Well, thanks, by the way. Uh, but the BMW didn't. Oh, complete write off. They brought it into the local garage. What was left of it? I'm getting a new one next week when I get this off. Well, I'm glad you're all right. Apart from all that, was a holiday, okay? Tom. Oh, yes, sure. It's fine. 
Magpie's still there. Jess. What is up, Tom? It's Sarah, Harry. There's, there's something odd about her. Something strange. The old ardor has cooled, eh? Cooled? Oh, no, nothing like that. In fact, she's incredibly in... in bed. Really? Oh, just incredible, but... I don't know, it's just not the same old Sarah. Oh, you mean she's changed? Yes. Oh, my dear fellow, I'm not surprised. After a bad car accident, followed by a week alone with you in the country talking about corporate law at breakfast time, well, my dear chap, I mean, that is likely to turn anyone a bit odd. Harry, did you ever have concussion? Three years in the parachute regiment, of course I've had concussion. Happened a couple of times, stupid landings. It a couple or three times. But did you ever have dreams? Bizarre dreams, when you are unconscious? No, the point of concussion is that you are out cold. No dreams, good God. Why? Oh, nothing, no reason. Look, we'd better have a look at this old boy. Yes, Perry Newman and Schreiber business. How are we going to handle it? Well, old man Perry will be in Connecticut just now. Someone should brief him before the offer comes through from Venezuela. God knows they pay enough for our advice. Someone from the Boston office? No. Now I'll go myself. Concord tomorrow, then fly up to Maine and the Beechcraft. That's my boy. For a time, I was afraid you were going to lose the magic touch. for dinner. First, some mutton broth. If it's a boy, we'll call him... what? Mark. I rather like Mark. Mark. I like Andrew. Mark Andrew? Mm -hmm. Sounds a bit like Mark Anthony. Also, Mark Martin. Doesn't sound right. Toby. Toby Martin. Toby Martin. This fish is good. Why aren't you eating it? Hmm? The salmon. What are you having? Thin, raw strips of fillet, darling. It's delicious. How about tea ball? a strange name. Tibor? Have you never heard it before? Maybe. Tibor, Mrs. Ardoy's child. One of the eight, Sarah. Who is Mrs. Ardoy? When she's at home. And it's been like that for weeks now. Ever since I got back from the States that last time. Oh, my poor old Tom. Well, you know, uh, uh, Lucy, the, uh, <laughs> uh, the new temp. No, no, no. That's not the problem. See, Sarah's changed so much, Harry. She's hardly the same person. She's gone a bit odd, remote. She's even got a bag packed in his months before her time. What does the quack say? Oh, he says she's fit as a fiddle. The perfect child-bearing unit is how he romantically describes her. But the fetus is growing at one hell of a rate. Faster than he's ever known.
Sarah? Tom, old man. About this South African shipping contract. Uh, Harry, can I ring you back? Of course. Anything wrong? Well, Sarah, I think she's left. Where for? I think I know. I think I've always known. Tom. Time is near. Yes. The others will finish this. have left it much later, could we, dear? Wasn't sure if... if I dreamt it. Welcome home, dear. And now we must hurry. There's not much light left. nice and regular. Lovely. Now, you take your clothes off. There's a clever girl.
You know, it's really peaceful here. I think part of me kind of expected to be here. Fine evening. Yes. It'll be dark soon enough. Rain too like as not. Are you lost, friend? Well, I'm, I'm looking for the entrance to an old track near here. A track, friend? Well, actually, I'm looking for a big house. There's a, an overgrown track that leads up to it from the road. No. There's no tracks for miles either side here. The woman who lives there is called Ardoy. Ardoy? Uh, with... Hordes of children. It's a funny setup, really. You've passed the spot, friend. Or maybe it's further on. This road stretches for miles before Apple Grove. It is around here. I know it. You see, I think my wife's gone there. There's no tracks. No house. Why, well, you're welcome to walk a ways with me. Look for yourself. Right. I'll do that. There, there, dear. Not much longer now. Something troubling you, dear. I'm frightened. Only a few more minutes. It'll be all over. You... you must know a few legends about these parts. Legends? What sort of legends? Well, witches, that sort of thing. Witches? <laughs> You'll not find witches in this part of the forest. How about werewolves? Werewolves? Legends. Any legends about werewolves? No. Nothing like that. Nothing I've ever heard of. Why, you won't find werewolf legends this side of Hadmez of Ashorali. Where is that? It's a province of Hungary. thing, Woodsman. Yes. Just suppose there was a werewolf in these parts. <laughs> I'd try. Why should he want to lure young women into the forest? Mate with them. Rear their children with a foster mother like Mrs. Ardoy, of whom naturally you have never heard. Hmm? Wolves, friend. They live in packs, wolves do. And each pack has its leader. And the leader has many mates and many cubs. Now a werewolf, not that I would know, but surely it would be natural for a werewolf, if such a legendary creature existed, to have the same instincts, wolf-like. 
full pine. But Mrs. Ardoy, the foster mother, those beautiful children. Beautiful children when it's light. But when daylight has finally fled the forest, it's time for the wolf in them to scamper among the trees. Kill an occasional wild sheep. Oh, they do like their mutton broth. The table, the flute, that house. In the day, do not werewolves take on their human form? Surely any father would want his cubs to have a cheerful foster mother and a comfortable house, learn the graces which their human side needs for their happiness. Why, if you ask me, this particular werewolf sounds quite civilized. Where were the mothers? I remember you now. Please. If anything happens to Sarah. fellow, just like his dad. Don't you dare rewind on me now. sort of reminded me of that popular old fairy tale. You know, the one where Little Red Riding Hood gets eaten up by the big bad wolf. <laughs> well, kind of, sort of. And you know, the one thing they must not have had out there in that house in the woods was a TV set. I mean, otherwise, Mr. Ardoy would have known that eight is enough. Mr. Ardoy has the touch. Yeah, well, I guess he does. <laughs> I mean, nine little rugrats, one after the other like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, with nine of them little nippers, he's gonna be able to field his own darn softball team. <laughs> now, what would make a good name for him? How about the Cubs? <laughs> oh, boy, I've always liked a good werewolf movie. They get me in the mood to go out and do a little howling of my own. <laughs> of course, when I do that, I wouldn't be caught alive in this old dress. <laughs> nah, I like to slip into something kind of low-cut and sexy. <laughs> Who knows, maybe tonight I'll meet the man of my dreams, Mr. Wonderful. The kind of guy I'm looking for is an honest working stiff. He's got to be working, and he's got to be uh, honest. <clears throat> I've got my fingers crossed, but before I take leave, I'd just like to remind you of this, darling. You can catch my act on all the thriller videos available at your favorite video outlet. Look for me with such fiendish delights as the Monster Club. I will take you to a place where my friends foregather. 
There are vampires, werewolves, ghouls, every kind of monster you could ever imagine, and some far beyond the imagining of mere mortals. There you will find stories of such blood-curdling terror that it will make your toes curl and your hair reach up towards the sky. Witching time. Tell me, David Winter, what you do with witches in these times? Witches? Uh, no. That's very good, David Winter, because I'd be a witch. Yes, yes, of course you are. I like a ghost. Why well, be a ghost? I'd be a living woman, David Winter. Lucinda Jessup, she called herself. She was here. Well, she doesn't seem to be here now. Oh. Come on. Lie down. I'll get you some breakfast. You're back! Mistress Mary, all of mine. No! Don't you know the fire is my master's element? Help me out! Help me out! You burned him! Let him be mine forevermore! No! Silent scream. I would prefer to call it my collection. <laughs> and more, all from Thriller Video, and all with little old moi, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I'll be looking for you soon, and until then, here's a kiss to hold you. And of course, Unpleasant dreams.